Welcome back to the final installments of upgrading our Elgu Neptune 4 Plus with all of TBS Tron 3D's upgrade kits. Today, we are installing the Z-axis synchro belts to get rid of the linear rods, removing one of the last annoying things to maintain a 3D printer. This upgrade kit does require the Z-axis linear rails from TBS Tron 3D to be installed before, so keep that in mind before you go and buy just the kit to get rid of the linear rods. But before we start, I'm Ed, and welcome to my Tuck Talk. Some of the things you'll need for this install are two cans, my choice, or the same size objects to rest the X-axis gantry on later. We need to print this clip to hold the main cable once we are done. I'll have it linked below. And the Allen keys that came with the 3D printer. Remember to keep your parts nice and organized to make the disassembly and reassembly easier later on. Some parts will be reused while most of it will not be though. First, let's start off by removing any external components of the printer, like the spool holder, the runout sensor, and the support brackets. We will also have to remove the main cable from the tool head and unbolt it from its holder as it will get in the way later. Then disconnect the motor wires as well. Now we want to start removing all of the top hardware, like the lead screw holders and the top profile brace. But don't forget to cut the zip tie at the top and be mindful of your LED and runout wires. Once set aside, loosen the set screws holding the pulleys and then remove both the pulleys and the belt from the lead screws. Next, we'll want to grab the items I mentioned earlier, like the two soup cans, place them under the Z-axis gantry, and then lower the gantry so that it rests on the cans or whatever item you're using. Once the gantry is resting on your placeholders, go ahead and start removing the bolts that hold the lead screw bracket in place. And put those bolts to the side because we will reuse those for that 3D printed clip later. Then we can disconnect the Z-axis motors and remove the bolts holding the cables in place. Following that, we then can remove the motor bracket, freeing them from the upright profiles. Next, we want to grab one of our synchro belt adjustment seats and loosen the T-nuts so that they will slide into place. Now grab four of the M4 by 16, two for each side, and secure them in the same threaded holes we removed the brackets for the motors earlier. Then tighten the two T-nuts below them as well. Now we can grab our top profile brace and the new upper brackets and use the original screws to loosely install them for now. Once we have both sides loosely installed, grab the optical axis, aka the rod, and slide one end into the bearing like so. Then we need to slide on a couple things in a certain order and direction, so pay close attention to this next part. First, put on one of the isolation columns, then a pulley with the teeth closer to the bracket. Next, a bearing with the smaller side facing the bracket. Now we want to do the same thing, but in reverse order. So slide the bearing on to the rod so it's facing the opposite direction, then the pulley with the teeth facing the other bracket. And lastly, slide on the isolation column. With everything on the rod, go ahead and slide it into the other side of the bearing and make sure to leave equal length to stick out from the brackets. With the optical axis in place, now we can fully secure the top profile bolts. Back to our Z motors. If you haven't already removed the coupling holding the lead screw and Z motor together, do so now. Then remove the plastic housing around the motors as well. Wow. 
Now we can mount the Z motors to the upper brackets using the included M3 by six bolts, but do not fully tighten these just yet. Then place a short isolating column on the optical axis, then install the large and small pulley with a belt attached like so to the optical axis and Z motor. Once you have your belts on, go ahead and tighten the set screws on the pulleys, then fully secure the Z motor bolts after. Next, we are going to route our belts from the top hole to the bottom pulleys and attach them to the back plate of the Z gantry we installed when we changed out our palm wheels for the linear rails on the Z axis. Once the belts are in place, tighten the bottom tensioners and then move the gantry up and down to make sure everything is still operating smoothly. Then tighten the set screws of the pulleys on the optical rod. Next, we wanna grab our little plastic brace and slide the bearing into position and then push it into the new bracket so that it supports the optical axis. Now let's grab the motor extension cables and the one labeled right will go on the side where the screen sits. Run the cables up the profiles and use the ceiling strips to hold the cables in place. Now grab that 3D printed piece we printed earlier and install it using the four bolts from linear rod brackets to the back plate like so. Then we can go ahead and start plugging everything back in, starting with the top motors then the MAG cable back into the tool head and the X-axis motor cable. Let's also install the rear and front supports. The front supports are also sold by TBS Tron 3D and I'll have them linked below. And with the final piece in place, we are finally done upgrading our Neptune 4 Plus. It's been fun doing all these upgrades and I hope you've enjoyed them too. Now that I've got all my upgrade kits installed, I have to take some time to get my Neptune 4 Plus back up to speed and really push it to its limit. So stay tuned on a video of that, but don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.